You may have been hearing some crazy things about the real estate market right now. Things such as home prices are tanking, we're going into a housing crisis. Or my personal favorite, now is the worst time to be buying or selling real estate in the history of the world. <laughs> Before we get started, I'm Stephanie Noss. And I'm Nicole Schloss with the Homeplicity Realty Group. And as your Toronto real estate experts, we're here to give you the full story, backed by data, mm -hmm. on buying or selling in this current Toronto market. So I think let's start with home sellers and the question on everyone's mind is now a good time to sell your home. We're getting this question a lot for obvious reasons. At the end of 2021, we saw prices skyrocket and then coming into the beginning of this year, that just continued. The bank started raising interest rates and we saw prices pretty much fall off a cliff. Yeah, in March and April. So a lot of experts, myself included, do think that now presents a good opportunity for home sellers. And the reason for this is because a lot of that decline and retraction in pricing we've seen is the lost money is just off the peak of the market in February. So we saw a slight dip in prices in September. That was the first month that we saw year over year prices come down by around three and a half percent. And then we saw another small dip in October of only 1.3% versus the same time last year. We also saw 49% less homes sell 49% last transactions. So we're basically back to pricing that we saw at the end of summer of 2021 at this point. And the price decreases do seem to be shrinking. So that number seems to be getting smaller and smaller. And this tends to show that the market is flattening or stabilizing versus still decreasing or a market crash. So positive. Yeah, it's, it is positive, I think. And that was the whole point of these interest rate hikes, right? Was to stabilize the market, to help curb inflation. So, mm -hmm. you know, let's see how this all plays out. But there's a couple reasons why we're not seeing prices crash. And the first one has to do with supply and demand. And that's just that the actual housing inventory is way down. We saw from September of this year to September of 2021, inventory for new listings was down by 17%. And then we saw another huge number for October of this year, we're down by 11.6%. So October of 2021, we had 11.6% more new listings coming on the market than we did this month, which is why that number I mentioned earlier, that 49%, less transactions, it makes sense because there's just less available inventory to sell. And then the second thing that I think to be mindful of is that the condo market is outperforming the freehold market. Now, why is that? Because there's a lot of people who are owning investment properties and they're not going to sell their property when the rental market is so strong right now. So we're sitting on double digit around 20% plus increase in rental prices from the beginning of this year the people that put their properties up and they're not getting the price or action they're looking for they're just saying like why don't we take our property off the market we'll keep it we'll rent it we have our low interest rates from a few years mm -hmm. ago locked in we've seen this happen with over and clients. over again in the last few months yeah with our own clients and i just think it does make sense so there's even less inventory on the condo market which is why condo pricing is pretty much stayed the same it's on par with what it was this time last year and there's always an equilibrium between renting and buying. At a certain point, the rental prices will get high enough that it will start to make sense, especially when we're seeing prices coming down for the purchasing, it'll start to make sense for buyers to be coming back out of the rental market and back into the buying pool. And then the last point, the one that we really can't do this video without mentioning is the rate increases. So if you're a seller and you're planning in the next six months to a year to be putting your property on the market, there is a good chance experts are saying that maybe a couple more increases coming into 2023 before it starts to stabilize and potentially taper off a little bit. So if you're that seller, then you might want to look at getting the home sold and pull your mm -hmm. timeline ahead so that you get it done before the rates start to increase. The next Bank of Canada update is scheduled for December 7th. So we'll have to see what happens with that. But if they do continue to increase, there'll be less prospective buyers in the buyer pool looking. So you might have a harder time down the road getting the price that we're getting today and also getting it sold in the timeline that we're getting today. It could take longer and you could end up selling for less. Well, we will definitely all be waiting for that Bank of Canada announcement and we will let you know what happens when it is announced. Yes, yeah, stay tuned. We just spoke about the sellers. So now, of course, we have to go on the flip side and talk about the buying market. Mm -hmm. That's your specialty. <laughs> I think the biggest questions right now are, should I wait? 
and is this in my best interest? So even with rates higher, becoming a homeowner does help you hedge against inflation. This is because unlike stocks and bonds, real estate doesn't become devalued by inflation. So another thing to note, and we did just talk about this with sellers, but if you're trading up in the real estate market, then you're technically becoming a buyer. Mm -hmm. So with prices down around 18% off the peak, you save more money on your larger expensive home. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think that's one of the things that people sometimes forget about is that that's the one buyer group right now that could actually benefit from this. And that's because if we see prices down by 18% on a trade up property, let's call it a million to make the math easy versus 18% down on the $600,000 condo you're going to sell, the more expensive property came down more in price. So when you're selling your property and trading up, whatever you feel like you lost on the sell side, mm -hmm. you're going to make up for it and then some on the buy side. Exactly. And then you also save on other parts of your sale. So you save on the purchase price, you save on the down payment, the land transfer tax, the mortgage insurance, even with rates being higher, which is a bonus. Mm -hmm. So as long as you're comfortable with your job security, comfortable with your payments and plan to hold your property for three to five years. That's key. Yep, which exactly is the key part then it does still make a lot of sense to purchase. Mm -hmm. While your property tax expenses may increase, typically your largest monthly payment will stay the same. And I find that helps a lot with budgeting. Yeah, for sure. One of the last points that I wanted to bring up, and Stephanie did mention this in terms of rent prices. Mm -hmm. So as rent prices go up, what's gonna happen is it's more and more buyers are actually not gonna be able to buy. So it's gonna push buyers more into the rental market and just keep those rent prices going up. Yeah. So basically until the interest rates flatten, we're just gonna see that rent continuously prices. rise. Yeah. So owning your home is a good way to protect yourself against those future rent increases. And real estate historically is one of the safest places to put your money recession or not. Yeah. So why not be your own landlord? There's some food for thought there. If you can afford it. Yeah. If you can afford it and you're like we said, if you're comfortable with your financial situation mm -hmm. and your job security. So I hope that you found this helpful and just something we want to be clear about the right time for you to buy or sell a property, no matter what market is in is going to always be the right time for you. So if sure. this is going to make sense for you and your family, don't get tied up with all the drama that's happening in the media right now. This is really going to be a personal decision based on the fact factors happening in your life at the moment. Yeah, for sure. And if this is something you actually are considering, like, let us know. We can show you the data for your home, for your area, and we can help you make the best decision for you and your family. Yeah. Um, so go ahead and click the link down below for a free no obligation consultation with your Toronto real estate experts. We appreciate you watching and we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.